Welcome to the Square Takeoff How-To Video Series. In today's video, we're going to discuss how to create a custom formula inside of the Estimating Under the Template section of your Square Takeoff software. Let's get started. Whenever we select the Template section here, you're going to see a couple different items that will appear. For example, you'll see your Square Takeoff starter packages, and then also too, you can create your own custom templates. So within here to create a custom template, as I did here with my demo template, you simply select the add new template. From here, you can go through and enter a template name, a description, and then also to make sure you select the proper user group, which your group most of the time will be the default group. Once you do that, you simply hit save and it will appear here just as you see with the demo template. Next, you're gonna wanna start adding folders or assemblies. To do that, you would simply select this plus sign here. This will then go through and allow for you to add a folder or an assembly. In this example, I went ahead and added a uh, assembly here. So let's go ahead and close this out. I added an assembly called floor square foot. So the first formula that we're going to build today is strictly just a takeoff only template. What this allows for you to do is to create just takeoff only items to where you can capture just things like only square footages or linear footages or counts. After we complete this, we'll go ahead and create a little more complex item that'll allow for you to break down that square footages, for example, and, and now break it into how many pieces of material that you may need. So looking at this floor square foot, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and add a part. If we go ahead and select the plus sign again, we can see folder or part. We'll go ahead and select part. Next up, we're gonna select one of our part types. And for this, let's go ahead and select material. Let's go ahead and give it the name of floor, floor square foot. And as you can see, as I'm typing that in, it did query some of our parts catalogs based off of the initial information that I was entering. Uh, from here, I'll go ahead and select a description of floor square foot. And then from here, I'll hit save. Once this is saved, you'll see the property buttons appear. Within here, I can go ahead and enter things such as a part number if I wanted to. And a lot of time I'll use a similar part number as it is as it pertains to the part name if I don't have a dedicated part number. Next up, let's go ahead and jump into the part properties. So within the part properties, you have a lot of different things. For here, you have area, count, linear. These are the base items that are pulling off of the original parent item or your measurement property. Next up, you have the most important field. That is our QTY field, or our quantity field. This is where we're gonna place this formulation. You also have additional things such as the cost each. We can go ahead and select the cost each. You'll see that some of these other items such as cost total already have a formulation within them. Uh, cost markup, for example, you can go ahead and edit that field. But as you can see, it has a bunch of different items down through here. So for this example here, we're gonna go ahead and select the quantity. We're gonna go ahead and hit the edit button. And once we select the edit button, you're gonna notice we have three different items located on the left. One, we have the property data that contains the formula that we'll create here. It also creates, uh, contains items such as our types. The types contain things such as yes, no, check boxes, lists, uh, memos, numbers, uh, and text. As you'll notice within your quantity field, it always is defaulted as text. Uh, I would say that probably 90% of the time, I always utilize text because I may contain some type of text property uh, information that might need to be contained within the formula. So most of the time, if you use text, you'll be just fine. Next up, let's go ahead and select the input button. In here, you can see that you have things such as allow input. I will explain that here in just a little bit, but once you, if you have this selected, what this actually will do is it will pop up here within your property screen when you're doing the takeoff and allow for you to modify it. For quantity field, we do not leave this checked. We go ahead and keep this unchecked and we're good to go. Uh, next up, we have a list. Once again, this is used whenever you're outside of a QTY or quantity field. Uh, from here, you would use this on other items, other properties that are contained within this. For example, a location. You may have a list of different locations that you would like to use within this. But for this here, we're going to keep this simple. We're going to go into our formula field for our quantity. The first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead. Now, you can go ahead and type in your information here if you know what it is. But we've tried to make this easier by giving you a formula writer. If we select the X2 button, you're going to go ahead and see a formula box here. And then you're going to see items located on the right. These items are all the properties that are contained within this one component. So within this one part, these are those contained items. Next, you have functions and operators, such as round up, round down, square root, pi. Uh, you have your parentheses, plus, minus, divide, and, and multiply. Um, to go ahead and do this here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with our formula. Since we're only doing a formula that we want to capture just the square footage, we can keep this very simple. We know that we're using the area tool because we can see it indicated by the icon here. 
we can go ahead and select one of the three items. So to start a formula, we need to first always start with the, the item in which we're measuring. So we know that we're doing an area value. If we're using the linear tool, we would use the linear value. Even if you're using the linear tool with the wall area type turned on, you still want to make sure that you're using the linear value because you're using a linear tool to measure. So from here, we're going to go ahead and select this here. And if we double click it, it adds the area value here. At this point here, we've now gone ahead and we've measured this out and we've added this item here. So we can go ahead and hit the save button and we've now created this formula. The next thing that we may want to check out is our inputs. Our unit of measure uh, is probably not going to be each. We're probably going to want to go ahead and call this square foot, for example. Once we hit save, we can now see that we have a dedicated area here such as the quantity square foot. From here, we can go ahead and hit close. We can now see that we have a formula built out for just takeoff only. Now, the beauty of this is, is at any given point, if we needed to make a duplicate for this here, for example, for roof, we can absolutely do the exact same thing. So you can easily duplicate this item by simply hitting duplicate, and we can say that this needs to be the roof square foot, for example. Um, underneath here, I can go ahead and say that uh, we're going to call this roof area, and then once again, we can default this out if we wanted to just to a 612 and hit start. And you'll see that it creates that. And then lastly, all you would need to do is just adjust some of the parameters underneath the parts, such as roof. Type in roof there, and then we'll go ahead and do that here. So the nice thing about this is once you build one formula, you're able to reutilize that component over and over again um, as it pertains to other items. So we go ahead and hit save and hit close. And that's it. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and we wanted to create a more advanced component, such as maybe doing floor sheathing, uh, for example, or even roof sheathing. Let's say we're going to do roof sheathing. Uh, we know that a piece of roof sheathing is a 4 by 8 piece of 716 OSB. We would go through here and we would need to go ahead and create this. So let's go ahead and start with the creation of our assembly first. So we're going to go through and we know that this is going to be done by an assembly. So we select the area. Once again, we can select linear or count. Uh, but at this point here, we're going to go ahead and select area. And we're going to say that we are going to calculate the roof sheathing. We can go ahead and copy down the name here. We'll select roof area. And then from here, we can go in and once again default it at 612. Um, we select a random color. And then we'll go ahead and hit start. And what that does is that creates our first level. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go through and select the part. From here, we'll go ahead and select material. We'll go ahead and paste in that name, roof sheathing. And we can even come through here and call it exactly what it is. Maybe we want to go ahead and say that this is 7 sixteenths. Uh, by 4 by 8, um, and we can even say OSB, and then from here we can go ahead and say properties, and once again we can copy this name here and paste it into our part number so we have it. The next thing that we want to do, once again, is go to our quantity field. Uh, we can go ahead and select the edit button, and then from here we can go through and we can start with our formula. So let's go ahead and select the uh, X2 button. Just as we did with the other ones, we're going to double click the area. And then from here, we're going to think about how we put it into our calculator. So whenever we're doing, for example, roof sheathing, we would normally go through and we would calculate out the total square footage. Once we get the square footage, we would then go ahead and divide that by the square footage coverage of the material. So for example, a four by eight sheet of OSB would be 32 square feet. So at this point here, we can go over to our functions and operators, or you can simply type this in on your keyboard if you'd like, uh, we'll go ahead and hit the divide button, and then we simply hit 32. Now, we've done this so far. So at this point here, just like we've entered into our calculator, we've entered in the total square foot, we've hit the divide symbol, and then we said 32. Now, when we're ready to hit the equal key, that's when we utilize our parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and key punch these in here. I'm going to say add a parenthesis here and add a parenthesis here. When we add these parentheses, these are treated like the equals key. So what this allows for us to do is go ahead and select this here, and then we can go ahead and continue on. Now, if I want to round this up to the material here all the way up, I prefer to go ahead and just type in round up. And what this will do is it will take the total square foot, divide by 32, and it will round it up to the nearest whole piece when we measure it. So once again, just to, just to cover this here, we started with the area value. Let's go back here. We started with the area value. We then divided it by 32. And then once again, just like we would on our, our 
calculator, and when we're ready to hit the equal key, we make sure that we wrap that in parentheses. If you ever have errors within your formulas, nine times out of 10, it has to do with the parentheses, making sure that you use the parentheses. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and add in waste, I can go ahead and say plus, uh, or actually I'm say um, times the waste, and what I'm gonna do is add one parenthesis there, and I'm gonna say plus 100, and close this off because I want this here to operate together. So I'm adding the waste plus 100, and then I will divide by 100. And the reason I do that is it allows for me to go ahead and add a whole number within my, my waste property, uh, such as 10% versus 1.10. But as you can see here, I've added a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here. I've closed this off so this operates. And then at the end of this here, I've added one at the end and one all the way back at the beginning. And then once again, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and select round up. And that's it. Let's go ahead and hit save. Once again, let's check our inputs. And we can go ahead and change this from each to maybe sheet if we prefer. We can go ahead and hit save here. And then lastly, we can go down here and we can look at our waste. Our waste is currently set at zero. We can go ahead and edit our waste here to 10. Hit save, save, and close. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and let's jump over to one of our plans and go ahead and use this and see what our results are. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see how this is going to calculate out. So let's test these out. So if we go to our template section, you're going to notice that if I go to uh, my default templates, is what you should land on, we'll see the demo template. And inside of here, once again, I have floor square foot, roof square foot, and roof sheathing. So let's go ahead and check out our roof one items here because this is the page that I'm currently on. As I can see, this is 712 pitch. So if I select the roof square foot, I go through here, and once again, just quickly adjust this here. I go and hit the start button. And then from here, I can go ahead and type in a cost each. So this would be cost per square foot. And I can also indicate a location, for example. At this point here, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm going to go ahead and click us around here. So I'm going to go up and around. You know what? I'll just go ahead and stretch it all the way down here. Hit stop. I can see that my result here is 490.85. Now, if I go to my reports, because I'm using a template, I can now see that located underneath my estimate button. So if I go ahead and select that there, this will go ahead and pull this up to where I can go ahead and expand this. And I can see that I'm at 490.85, which is also indicated here within my component here. So 490.85. Now, if I want to, I can go ahead now and do my roof sheathing tool, select that, and let's go ahead and repeat the process, say 712 pitch. Let's hit start. Once again, I can see that I have the 716 OSB here. I have the cost each, uh, the location, and also have a waste percent displayed here. If I go and hit save, I can then go through here and drop this in. And just as we did, let's go ahead and click this around here. I'll stop it. I can now once again see my square footage here. I can go and hit the estimate button. And by selecting the estimate button, I'm going to go ahead and see this line item here now for my roof sheathing. And by saying 489.51, I can now see that I have a total of 17 sheets. And that's once again based off the square footage and then also too with a 10% waste on top of that. That's it. Thanks for watching today's video. 